Welcome to the podcast for the sisters and bros. It will make you laugh from your head to your toes. Talking about their lives, from the highs to the lows. And the name of the title goes... The Sloppy Joes. Welcome everyone to the Sloppy Joes podcast. This welcome is, one, welcome all. This is how a praying mantis works. For the audio listeners, what are you doing? I'm just sort of splaying my hands out as, as wide as they'll possibly go. And then I'm kind of t- outward turning them towards the sort of exterior of the room. And I'm kind of smushing them across the table. It's interesting, uh, interesting sort of vibe we're going for really doors. Yep. I, would, would you ever live in the woods? What, like a sort of Ramirez type? Yeah, I had a taxi driver this morning say so that's what he's going to do after he's 60 years old. When he gets to 60, he's going to just go and live in the woods? Yeah. I don't think I would live in the woods, but I do love, I used to love Ray Mears Born Survivor. Do you know the TV show? Yeah. Where he'd sort of make a canoe um, out what? of the skin of a, I don't know, an old person or something. But he used to have this little mate, Ray Mears. Do you remember him? That old guy who looked like a geography teacher, who basically, this guy was a master of foraging. And a master? How did you become a master at that? And just eat enough mushrooms and don't Is die. Is that a man, man uni? Yeah, I think you can get a master's in it. Um, so he would go out, but basically it was always, because it's, once you're in season nine of a show, they've already, they've already caught like the nice mushrooms. They've already made a little rabbit sort of... Fondue. Wh- yeah, <laughs> dipped a rabbit in a, in a bit of cheese. <laughs> so now they're just eating like shit. Oh, <laughs> so awful. Like, Here we go, if we get enough, you can, you, you know, make the, the human natural honey and that will attract the wasps. And then you dry out the wasps, you grind them, you piss on them and you make that into a paste that you can that you can then spread on some bark and that would be the dinner. And then he eats it and everything he goes, he goes It's not palatable. Awful, that, isn't it? By the end, it's just an old geography teacher telling you that things aren't palatable. He's grinding up wasps, he's eating like nettles, he's eating soil, he's eating his own farts. But bugs are apparently the way forward, aren't they? Have you seen this? Bugs are the way forward. I'm surprised you're not already onto this. It's it's so hard to get a, a sort of ten kilos of human ready cricket meat. Just go outside. What on that? No, but I have some. You don't have to have crickets, do you? I've like a uh, daddy long legs. Oh yeah. Uh, snail. Not much meat on a daddy long legs, though, is there? Nah, do you know, nah. you get the leg, you get, <laughs> just sort of rotating that round. It's very but it's sparse. Skinny, skinny on the old meat. I there. I struggle to eat foods where you eat the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Like lies. A, what? Like what? You're lying. You're like a pizza. Oh my god, there's a full pizza here. No, I don't I'm not gonna that. be able to eat this. No, but that's not a single food. That's, oh, that's a meal. <laughs> I, I mean, like, like, oh my god, if you give me the no, whole but I pizza? wouldn't want to eat like. Do you know you can get squab? Have you ever had squab? Nope. Ba- it's like a baby pigeon. Oof. And sometimes they'll just deep fry that whole bitch, and you can just smash its face in with Oof. tea. But that worries me a bit. Like, if you're eating a wasp, you're eating the full thing, aren't you? Yeah. And it's a bit like, I don't know. It just feels a bit like something a giant would do. Would you? Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? well, we are no technically giants in the insect world. <sighs> You've summed it up. So man. good, yeah. You've summed it up. Ethan James is here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, well that was an appropriate intro. It, the big insects of the world. Ethan James is here. Yeah, yeah. You you do look a bit like a, no, a worm. No, not a worm actually. Do you know? Uh, do you know? Like there'll be a, a kids' TV show, and and in that show there'll be a kind of wise grasshopper. Yeah. That wears glasses. That its face looks like it's sort of made out of wood that will teach the children of the perils of, of the ancient world. I think you've got that kind of vibe to you, like a modern day grasshopper type man. What do you think of that? Oh, thank you. I, I think you recall the story when, oh, it was a cricket that I kept in the box, wasn't it? Which looks a bit like a grasshopper, doesn't Very it? Very similar, yeah. We're saying, would you eat crickets in the future, Ethan, if that's what it came to? Would I eat crickets? Well, yeah. it, I, I believe they're, they're probably cricket, fried in some countries. Oh, God. Sorry, say again. I think they're fried in some countries. I want to say maybe most commonly in probably the continent of asia right so oh. the fact the use of the word probably there does uh lend credence to the idea that you were being sort of casually racist no, no no and also i love how you picked the whole continent like you've done yeah. pretty well because also like you're guaranteed yeah. someone's gonna yeah because the east of turkey and you know singapore are two very different places aren't they and mm. they're both yet yeah, they're both in asia but if you don't pinpoint it's okay right. exactly how's your uh, virgin subscription pardon Virgin Media, how was your... Oh, how shit, was your sorry, uh, thought, yeah, I thought you meant something else. Um, amazing. And The Ashes is back. Oh, do you know what? Here's the thing. Fuck off. Yeah. Cricket's so dead. Fuck off. Right. It's so the dead. The cricket that's Everyone's dead. Everyone's like, oh, let's talk about England versus <laughs> Australia. Let's let's play for 24 hours for seven days a week. And then let's Australia win again. And then they win a little fucking trophy. Is this why you've got... I'd, a, I'd, I'd shove that trophy up my ass. 
Yeah, I know you would, and that's the problem with you. That's why you'll never be test captain, even though you do look sort of look like Ian Botham in his later years. Is the question is, number one, the only cricket that's dead, and Ethan can finish this joke for me, is... Is the one that I had in France. Correct. And is this why you're wearing Australian cricket green, by the way? It definitely is. Because your shirt is Good the night. exact colour of the caps that the cricketers from Australia wear. Could they be like Test you? cricket oh. is one of the most remarkable no, it's occ- not. occurrences in the natural world. Test cricket? Oh, bliss. Nah, like a yeah, rainbow is It's the only sport that lasts cricket. for five days, by the way. One game lasts for five days. That's incredible. An incredible sort of expression of, a, of longevity and endurance. Okay, that's not doing it for you. Yep. It's the mm-hmm. only sport in the world where you nothing know, really happens. There's a little boundary around the edge of it. Yeah, and I hate made out of rope. So even I want. We know to Scott with a cricket update, and he's sm- he just uh, boring, mundane little update. Test no match special is, is, an, is an occasion unto itself. You just don't get it. Even what you would your favourite sport be? Something fast. I don't know. Football. That's over. No, I don't think. Th- I, I think you'll get to a point where football's too slow for you. You'll just want. <laughs> what will it be? Sort of Tamagotchi something. Oh yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> if- <laughs> Even <laughs> air hockey. We're That's on what you good need. form. Air, air hockey. Lo- especially, I knew you love air hockey. Especially when have you seen the new version of air hockey where it's not just one thing? They put like fifty down. Yeah, at the this same is what time. I'm saying. The 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 more high octane sort of you essentially just want a blur of information hitting your corneas at, at world record speed. You don't even care who wins. You just want to see flashing lights, don't you? Essentially, the, your favourite sport would be a strobe light on a VR headset with you in a flotation tank for just days on end. Yes. Just being fucking And do you know what? It'd be better watching a sport for five days where they go, oh, they've got to go get some lunch now. Go up, bring a fucking pat lunch and eat that on the side of the pitch. Yeah. Oh, there's 15 fucking... Some of them don't even do anything Joe, all day. I, don't, I can't believe you don't love test cricket because it is the only sport where they break for two meals. You <laughs> fucking love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, can we get lunch added into football, please? And tea as well at the end of the day. And a drinks break. But can I have a mocha for my drink, please? Oh, I love that. And then a beer at the end. Well, Ethan, maybe... What, what's your take on cricket? So, Sloppers, our sponsor is Wingfest 2023. I'm going to be... And every single one of the remaining ones. The Sloppers, Ethan and Joe, will be at the Manchester one. But we need you and as many of the Slopper army to come down to the three. There is four remaining ones, but one of them is sold out completely. London is completely sold out at the end of, end, end of July. There is three remaining ones that we need to see as many as the Slopper army down there. Manchester is the hometown one. Come on. It is August the 12th, which is a Saturday, and August the 13th, which is a Sunday, obviously. That is when me, Ethan and Joe will be tearing up the Wingfest scene. So make sure you grab your tickets for it. It is a brilliant occasion. The biggest food festivals, or one of the biggest food festivals in the world. Chicken wings, chicken wings, chicken wings. If you're not in Manchester, there is a Birmingham one at the Bond in Digbeth. That is Friday the 25th of August, all bank holiday weekend, so the 26th and the 27th. Then finishing off in one of my favourite locations, it is Bristol from Friday the 8th of September to the 9th to the 10th. Tickets can be found at wingfest.co.uk forward slash tickets. Come and eat some food with us. Come and drink some beer. Come and dance to some tunes. Come and be sloppy at Wingfest. Is that, can I say sloppy at Wingfest, yeah? We're going to go with it. Buffalo sauce everywhere. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Cricket's crap. Fuck I once um, went to watch baseball, if I can draw any similarities to that. And the, the great American pastime. Exactly, and the best bit of um, that was, um, since the game had so much of a score, and Cincinnati oh. lost by so much, that everyone in the stadium won a free Chick-fil-A chicken burger. <laughs> this is what I mean, see? No, no, no. What's wrong with that? Everyone in the stadium. Everyone in the stadium. How Never seen Joe as jealous as this, yeah, by the way. Gutted. And when was this? This was in 2019. How many people do you think were in the stadium? Oh, at least 30,000. <sighs> what? Imagine intercepting Se- that delivery order. Do you know when you see like real high-end <laughs> drug dealers and what they'll do no. is they'll get a, they'll get a lorry and they'll stop it on the way there and they'll take all the, they'll steal all the drugs off it off a rival guy. What are you talking about? 
like into like you see, oh, I've bought some trainers off the back of a lorry. Oh yeah, yeah. When yeah someone's yeah. like, or some right. meat, like a bit of lamb. Do you know what I mean? We're taking this off of we're taking it off its original shipment. I can imagine you working for a cartel that what it does its only job is to intercept those thirty thousand burgers <laughs> that are on the way to the Dodger Stadium or whatever. You go right. We can see the uh, we can see the fleet of delivery drivers. Put, put the spikes out and you just roll the spikes out and then you're selling burgers off the back of a lorry. I, I'd probably cause a bit more of a decoy, like pretend I'm like an old man lost in the middle of the road. That's and nice. then they pause and then someone else would run around the back, maybe my mate Andy, and then I'd lamp one of them. Yeah. And then we'd speed off and we'd just live off Chick-fil-A's for like years. Yeah, I'd love that. Did you, you get your deep Ethan? freeze? Oh yes, I got my Chick-fil-A and um, I remember the woman who served me um, at the time, I, I think she was, um, found me quite attractive and I think we've heard this story haven't we oh have you yeah. what well, did you there say there you lovely go. glasses didn't she say did she say lovely glasses no I didn't have the glasses at the time but she was like um, she was like are you from um, Scotland and I was like oh no but not far from Scotland Ooh, you could cryptic. say right on the, the the border in your American brain because obviously that's quite a lot to take in isn't it like where yeah, we live for, and a that. for a stupid American is that what you're trying to say yeah. We're going to America soon. Are you excited? Can't wait. We're going to do like New York. That reminds me, patreon.com slash Sloppy Joe's podcast. Uh, we're going to do little vlogs over in New York. Food uh, reviews of some of the New York classics. Yeah, and we'll just film like general behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I'm getting a new phone for it. Oh, yeah. So I can film it. You're getting a new phone? Yeah, because we thought we bring all these cameras. Remember we bring all the cameras? And I know you're bringing the cameras for Paddock, but I was like, when we did come down with the phone was good. The phone was good. So I'm going to just. Get a new phone. My old phone's done anyway. My old phone's at the point now where, oh, I'm going to fucking kill it. Where I have to, like, sort of, the charging point needs to be at a, like, 40-degree yeah. angle. It's got to be facing fucking Iceland. Yeah. It's got to be all sorts. And then it sometimes works. Do you mean the Iceland distribution centre that's around the corner from your house? Yes. Yeah. Because if it's facing that, what can <laughs> what could happen is, apparently, <laughs> some of the signal, the 5G rays bounce off the, the prone Kerry's platters. Kerry's belly. Kerry's, Kerry's belly and the prone platters, and that gives you extra sort of yes. electrical boost, doesn't it? So there, there is two reasons why. But uh, patreon.com slash Joe's podcast. Yeah. Are you ready for the third and final instalment of my holiday stories? Bum, bum, bum. I don't know I did that. Dublin. Oh. The greatest city on planet Earth. You go there enough, don't you? Yeah. Mate, what a fucking place. <laughs> Honest to God. Is it not a bit touristy, though? No, 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 because we found... Obviously, there's, there's Temple Bar, which is probably the most famous pub in the world. Mm. Anyone want to argue? Right? But then what we've done is... Well, Temple Bar is a pub, but it's also an area, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. just yeah, yeah. a one pub, but yeah, there is the one, one called... Pub. I think the one pub was there first, and then it got really, really popular, so they sort of just call that area Temple Bar now. Yeah. So then when tourists go, oh, we're going to Temple Bar, in fact, everyone's just jumping on the name. Yeah. Um, we go about 10 minutes out of the city centre. Oh. We were like, going down this one street, because Becky saw it had a McGrath's pub, so we wanted one Guinness in there. Yeah. And then, the problem is, Joe, oh, no. the pub crawl, it's a difficult thing to do in Dublin. Because all the pubs are bloody brilliant. And there's also a billion of them. You just want to stay in the one that you found cosy and nice and mm. great Guinness. Um, when it's a one pub, it was it was, it was was great fun. Um, there was a little dog who was the pub dog, and he'd just float up, like, wander about, but he didn't like getting scratched. Guess who found that the hard way? An old woman in the corner. Bit oh. the woman. <gasps> Bitter? <laughs> Give her a little... Wow. She was bleeding. That... That dog can't, That's bad, isn't that it? That dog needs to get well, a new job. Well, everyone in the pub, pub, apart from the little woman, found it hilarious. So she's got tetanus. She's probably either tetanus or rabies. So she's got less than two weeks yeah. to live. She's going to get locked jaw. She's going to sort of die one of the most painful, horrendous deaths possible. And, and then you then lot the, were just... And the dog was so smug about it. He's a little cute dog, and he just kept looking up. And then everyone... The word got around the pub that the dog had bit her. So everyone get, got up, and when they were having a cigarette, they'd walk past the dog. And they were just berating him, going, no it. dinner for three weeks. And the dog was like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, she was fine. Um, Becky thinks she got called a whore on the way out. Right. Um, by the she, dog? No, not by the dog, by yeah. an old man, because it started raining, look at and the, the old man was like, look, you're dressed as a horror. <laughs> so when you say best sit in the world, if you don't mind being- brilliant! <laughs> we were right, what a laugh though, in a fun way. It wasn't in like, a you're a whore. It was like, yeah. oh, I'm fucking pissed down rain and dressed as a whore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was that kind of, I was like, great, but yeah. I high-fived him. The thing with- <laughs> <laughs> I think the I thing with Dublin is it's know. really it's benefited a lot from not really updating itself for 200 years hasn't it and I bet there were times where 200 years 
like all of the pubs of 150 years, whatever. Oh, do you know what? All of the this pubs are the same age. And I bet there was times when it felt really a bit like scruffy and old. This but is one now, of these things, George. Do you know what? I was, I was now like, humanity. You just reminded me of something. We've, we've decided that age and like things looking a bit, you know, rustic is really good. So all the exposed wood, the old buildings, yeah. now is incredible. It is, it is. Yeah. Sometimes, Joe, I know listening to the podcast, maybe you can back me up on this. Mm. Sometimes you say stuff with such like authority mm. that in this moment I believe you. Mm. But when I listen back, I think he's talking shy. Well, yeah, but no, what I'm saying is there's no, I know what you're saying there's no big that modern buildings in the pub in, in Dublin, is there? It's like going to Edinburgh or something. Yeah, don't, you know, allow you, don't allow you. It's to all do it. old, and that's we love that now. We do. But there was a time post Second World War. Where everyone was again, like, I don't know if you, no. But, do you know this for certain? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Ireland didn't get involved in the World Wars between World so War they were asked. between World War Two <laughs> uh, and sort of the year 1995 or thereabouts. <laughs> there was a real a push towards modernising. You talk so much. You weren't born. You were three years old. Oh yeah. You reading books? Yeah, because no I one can know English. anything unless it happened when they were I'm an sorry, adult. Sorry, but you were like, oh, mum, mum. What do you mummy, think? The, mummy, mummy. What do you think I really don't like the remodernisation of the city <laughs> centres in the world. No, not She's just like, city centres. I'm talking about okay. pubs generally. So there was a big thing where pubs used to be small room, to. small room, small room, small room, <laughs> small room, small room, small room, bar. Yeah? yeah. That's your traditional pub, the Alex pub. A lot of the yeah, yeah, pubs in Dublin yeah. are like that, aren't they? There's little like clothes off, there's nooks, there's sort of stained glass, yeah. all that. Then in the 80s and 90s, <laughs> there was this thing of... Let's knock them down. Let's open them out. Let's have these big dining spaces. The rise of the gastropod. And the slug and lettuce. And the sl- your slug and lettuce. Your Yatesers. Yeah, yeah, the revolutions. Your vodka revolutionsers, right? <clears throat> and, and because of that, pubs became these large meal dining spaces that then didn't feel like pubs anymore unless you were eating in them. Do you see my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Dublin didn't do any of that. It went, we're staying, stained glass, wood, Bit of bit of brick, floorboards, yeah. little rooms, yes. cub, cubbies, nooks, and it's all the better for it. It's it's, it's probably the great pub city, isn't it? I lo- it's unbelievable, and I want to go uh, again, and uh, I can't You're wait. You're gonna go again. You gonna go, go again. I'm booking it straight away. Yeah. Um, so I went to see Sam Fender, which is obviously one of uh, um, Ethan's people. Um, big Geordie, it, isn't it? Uh, big Geordie. Guess what though? Uh, Newcastle, the, the soul has been ripped out of the club because yeah, there were people wearing Newcastle United tops, Ethan. Uh, for a fashion statement, mm. they didn't even support. Fantastic. They didn't even. Oh, of course. Oh, here he is. He just puts a positive. They didn't spin even on support everything. the club. I said, "Oh, unlucky this year, you know, coming below us and not winning the Carabao Cup." Didn't have a clue half of them. Well, you didn't know have what? A clue. But but the the point was, Drew, if you contextualise it, is we're there for Sam Fender, a great Geordie. So they were celebrating Newcastle as a place no. by doing that, which is why. That's completely different to whatever you were you were inferring. He doesn't know what you're inferring. Um, do you feel? Do you know what? But that's Fender a great point. Is, no, but I think this is I think this is a, a, great a tactical point. play by Fender himself. Yeah. I don't think this is uh, the fault of the young women wearing the Newcastle tops as a fashion statement. I don't think this is the fault of Newcastle FC or Newcastle as a city. I think Fender is sort of creating a scenario where. If you were a Newcastle fan, you have to like Sam Fender. Mm-hmm. Like he's almost piggybacking the, the the sort of the broadening of the Newcastle FC brand that has gone alongside with the sort of sports washing regime that's taken them over. But I think he's doing that on purpose to get more fans. Yes. If you're a Newcastle fan now, you sort of have to be a Sam Fender fan. Of course, because otherwise not like you're not. Him. You know, he's part of the gang. But he does he, out that he's fucking brilliant as well. He's, he's not. Don't be daft. He's I not. Saw him fly, he's fucking. He's bad. not. I Here's can the thing. Be, I wonder what United fans were like when the Oasis were good. Because mm-hmm. they did gigs at Main Road and stuff like that, the old city ground. Well, they I did the same thing with City fans, didn't they? Yeah. They sort of hijacked the city. Well, did they angle. isolate United fans? Well, a lot of United fans, I think you're from Manchester, a lot of United fans love Oasis, didn't they? Yeah. Like, Jay loves Oasis, Steve loves Oasis. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sam Fender was brilliant. It was yeah. a great atmosphere, and it was a great night. Was it? I had a lot of Guinness, um, and then I went on a Viking boat the next day for my birthday. That was brilliant. What, what do you... What what does that really mean though? Because that's not a birthday, is it? You can't it's go. A birthday. You went on a Viking boat for your birthday. We what? You just, what did you do? Go and pillage a town in in the north of England. We went on a a boat that is also a bus. You've been on one of these. Geezy Ethan, get, help me out here, mate. A what? boat a boat that's a bus. A bus that's a boat. Whichever you want to say it. Very James Bond, isn't it? If get you this, took so public okay. transport. So can it? This bus it, it'll go. You pick. You get on a bus stop. 
And it can also go out to Guernsey. Becky, is that what Becky saying? goes, I've got you a surprise for your birthday. Right. I wanted to see Dublin, but I can't be asked walking it. We're going to be sitting can't down. Be, I, the thing is, I want to go around Dublin, but I can't be asked to swim it. So, <laughs> so what down. can we do? I got picked up by a Viking bus. We're all wearing Viking hats on it. We're all chanting. There's a guy leading the way. And then at one point... I bet you look like a right load of canoots, didn't you? <laughs> Really get that. That's a really good joke, actually. Is it? If anyone gets that, they will be honestly pissing their pants at home. At one point, we decided. No, not we decided. The the bus. Then this was the surprise for me. Right. So that in, wasn't a turned surprise. into a boat. We went on the river. I couldn't believe it. And it could sail as well. So it was a boat that can sail and be a bus. Right, Ethan. Yeah. So Joe's big birthday present was uh, put on a hat and go on a bus. Yeah. Top ten shittest birthday presents of all time, would you say? Oh, well, you say that, Joe, but <laughs> I'm asking the wrong person here. <laughs> to be fair, someone who's owned was part of the birthday present. Oh, was it? Some okay. tickets were included. I do like this concept of a boat that's also a bus. So, was it really wide at the base? The you used whole to way? use it in World War Two. So, what, what's the Viking element? Just they make you put hats on these days? Yeah, I think so. And I think the, and it was quite awful, actually. He was like, <laughs> he was like, no, 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 no. This bit was awful. The actual tour was brilliant. Was it? But it was quite misogynistic. Like he uh, kept making like. Uh, so Becky's been called a whore already this trip. No, no, no. This is a different man. He no, kept I'm talking saying. about like, oh, he kept making jokes about like how many mirrors he has at the front of the bus. And, you know, you women, you like mirrors, don't you? I was like, oh, that's a bit. But that doesn't even make gone, sense because you, a man, are the one who <clears> owns all these fucking mirrors, mate. No, but the other bit was he got us all to like cheer in a Viking style, rah! Yeah. And then throughout the che- trip, he'd shout cheer, and we'd go rah! And I realised when he was doing it, it was just to scare people. So there'd be someone on the phone walking next to us, <laughs> like that, just going about their day in Dublin as you do. Yeah. And he'd go cheer, we go rah! And they'd, they'd be jumping out the skin. Oh. I got fully into it. Was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. So what did you see? Just like here on the right is that's where you two uh, recorded two of their studios. Oh. That's where the castle is. Nice. That's where it's self-explanatory though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, then, that's then... that. If you look on your right, that's where um, what is it? Oh yeah, the castle there is. Didn't Bruce Springsteen's favourite pub. Really? Um, I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to a lot of it, but yeah, you just you just waiting for the next. Rah, I was just enjoying you? the sit down. Yeah, waiting for the next rah. Yeah, loved it, Dublin. Let's go! Well done, Dublin. Should I would we... like to go to Dublin one day. You'd fucking love it, mate. Love it. Should yeah. come with us, see Sam Fender. Oh, When's yes. he next on? When are you going to go see him next? Oh, well, I was going to go see him in Scotland, the transmit, but I was hit with that £300 par- parking fine. That you're not going to have to pay. Well, we're, we're, we're in limbo with that tomorrow's deadline day, so that turns you to the first one. Yeah. You can we help? If I help you out, out, can I get 50 quid of the 350 that you would have paid? You want interest if... Oh, no. Right, so you would have paid no, 300 f- quid. Yeah. I'll sort this out for you, but I want 50. For 50. You, you'll sort... You're, you're sorting out the car park. So you leave it issue. with Joe. You leave won't have me. to pay I'll the 300, but you will have to pay him 50 quid. How's Joe going to fix it? Don't worry about how Joe's going to fix it. Do you remember that time you paid that bloke to get your uh, driving test bumped up the list? Funny yeah. you say that. Think I, of Joe sorry, as a sort of parking ticket that? version of that Come guy. On, what is it? What do you say? Well, what? someone messaged the... Um, I'm not going to name them. But somebody messaged the Stop Your Drew's Instagram account um, two days ago asking for that person's number to help themselves you get pumped to up the list. For that did you send it out? I issued it out, yes. Did you, yes. Did you charge him a tenner for the number? I didn't, but... Uh, no, but I, the person was very grateful because you said that I'm literally a lifesaver, so... Wow. Oh. Well done. Thanks. Um, how's your uh, sort of PA woman going? She's going great, yeah, definitely. Fine. Don't talk about that. No, Should this do? this segment's really weird, actually, <coughs> I've decided. This yeah, it's awful. Thing. It's awful. What? What this weird segment about you and... Well, you know, Daphne about and, and, and like I slept for 10 hours last night Daphne didn't help that she did except for 10 hours She's, I slept for 10 hours what time to go to bed I went to bed at 11 woke up at 9 talk to me about your uh, like dead uh, like nighttime routine do you literally like watch TV together or something uh, we it's it, it's TV off at about 10 at the latest yeah then we go upstairs brush uh, lay out tomorrow's brush our teeth alright lay out tomorrow's clothes then we get in bed you lay out tomorrow's clothes yeah How, you fuck up if you're waking up at nine and you've not got work, you've not got work today till three. Yeah. That's a lot of hours. Well, that's a lot one, of that's, to that, get that, some that's one day of the week. Every other day I wake up at 6.30. All right, so you, 
Fuck off. I wake you up wake at 6.30. Bollocks. Well, no, no, that is no you don't. I used to wake up at 7. All right, so back. you've laid out your clothes, and then what? You go into bed? Get into bed. Uh, just make sure there's no messages that need sending. Last checks. Then as of the sort of post-Daphne era, Kindle out, read a chapter of the book, and just sort of drift away. Knowing that I've done all of my tasks for the day. And there is no anxiety. There is no, oh, I should have done that. Or, oh, I forgot that. Or, should I get out of bed and send that now because I should have sent it today? I know I've got everything covered. And that way I can wake up nine to ten hours later, refreshed as all fuck. And you, it's, a, it's a feeling you'll never experience because you're in bed going, no, what have I done? I'm and straight, I'm there I'm going, straight off me, mate. I am straight off. Yeah, I can imagine. Like a light. That. Well, anyway, I'll keep updated with Daphne, but so far, so great. Do you believe in me from. Well. Drew mentioned reading there, and like he t- tries to read. We can I teach you to read, don't worry. Well, yeah, I, get, I yeah. can teach you. If and 50 quid, he'll do that, and then another 50 quid, he'll do the parking yes. ticket. I can't remember the last book I read. It must have been like a, a one at school when you do English class and you read through it as a, as a class. Like probably The Great Gatsby or something like yeah. that. So the other day I was on the train going down to Canterbury, and I was thinking... Oh, you know what? I really want to do something with my brain. I've been given it, so I should put some information in I it. I love that. I've been thinking, I really want to do something with my brain. I've what? not used it for fucking 10 years. Well, I just want to understand what its true potential is. How yeah. far can I take my brain? Could it become someone who is relatively average at a pub quiz? Someone who says yeah. an answer and you go, man, that's, that's brilliant, man. Good idea, well thought, yeah. So I thought, like, I want to, I want to, I want to be that guy. Yeah. So... I picked an area of, of weakness of my um, whole general knowledge and I pinpointed the one that I think is uh, consistent across... Fuck me. Let's carry on, sorry. <laughs> I picked the one that you probably find quite consistent across most pub quizzes, yeah. which is the round of music. Ah. If you've heard of music, <laughs> Yeah, I've heard yeah, of music. Yeah. What, music as in music. Roxy Music, the band. So I went one step further than that. One and step further than music? The whole of music. Oh, that's one step back, I would say. Well, one How step back. How do you mean the back. whole of music? So what I decided... It's the sound of music, but it's the porno <laughs> version. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive with the whole of music. music. So I went to a, a pub recently prior to this revision Fuck me. on on music or right. whatever and I'd done the music round and, and I you just went what is that on. what even is it is what? it like a food is it a gas what is music you didn't know did you I didn't I didn't I didn't have a clue no. I didn't have a clue but then when I was going down to Canterbury I looked up the top 500 albums of all time wow love this and I started reading them and I've done the top 10 what do you mean you've done the top 10 reading them you said as well so you just read the what the lyrics well, yeah, basically, because I noticed another thing. When I listen to music, I don't understand a word that they're saying. What do you mean? Do you what, do that what, as well? Do you what, listen what to music? What do you mean? But I think, I think this goes unmentioned. I think every person listens to as, as a song they love, maybe a song in the top ten songs, and they don't know any of the lyrics apart from six in the chorus. Mm. Would you say that's fair to say? Not in a top ten song, no. What, what artists have you been introduced to? Well, if he's to? doing top ten, we can guess, can't we? Michael Jackson Thriller. Michael Jackson, yeah, obviously number uh, one. Michael Jackson Thriller is in the top ten, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the Eagles Greatest Hits is one of the top selling albums of all time. I don't think that'll get into the top ten. Um, it does. I, I think... No, I, I mean like as a standalone piece of it. Well, top I think, high seller. I think he's right, you know, but yeah. I, I, that was probably one that I didn't do so much reading. Abba into. Gold. Abba Gold. That's up there. Oh, I can't remember. Definitely the Beatles, obviously. ACDC. Um, ACDC was just out, I think. You probably in the top ten. You're probably going to get probably a Madonna. She's one of the highest selling True artists Blue. of all time. Oh, I'm getting a bit forgetful. True Blue, isn't that a type of um, Nicorette gum? What about um, <sighs> Never Mind by uh, the Buzzcocks? No, no, no. The, Nirvana. Nirvana is spud. Well, that, I, I think that might have been number three. Number was it number four? three? Yeah, I think What's so. What's top three then? So the top Presley. two, if I remember correctly, uh, number one. Was uh, Marvin Gaye, what's going on, or whatever? Yeah. Oh, paid lots of attention to number one. Okay. Didn't he? Can't even tell. So them. what? So w- just, um, just, I'm just gonna stop you there. I don't care about the list. What have you learned? Well, I learned you, all you did is you read a list of top albums. You didn't listen to the album. Uh, you don't I even know the list. Well, I know that Marvin Gaye was really disgruntled with what was going on in the United States at the time and all the protests going on where 
where he was living in the 60s. So what we should do maybe at the end of this, once you've had your musical journey, we'll quiz you on some classical musical yes. questions. Yes, please weeks time. do Ethan's musical update as a new feature. You talk about what you've maybe listened to. Yeah, you can review album. an album, a oh, classic album. Brilliant. That everyone would have heard of. Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, oh, Thriller, well, funny you you know, Revolver. That. Beach Boys, Pet Sounds was the one I enjoyed most. It's a yeah, fantastic, yeah, one of my favourite albums. Great. Right, let's move on to uh, a... Sorry, oh, can I ju just, just quickly summarise. What I found out is that I don't think I really like music. But that's it, yeah. Good. But you will enjoy it, I think, after Once this. Once you get time. into it, exposure therapy. For the audio listeners, Joe, nothing has changed. Everything remains the same. For the visual boys and girls, we are in completely different attires. Yeah, you're, you look like you've been through a washing machine. Twice. And the rest. Don't smile like it, though. And you look like you've just been to see your... Dude, can you uh, stop it there? I've just been to see. No, no, you've just been to see your I grandparents. I like I've been to see. And they've offered you some form of clothing that they were going to throw away... But you went, no, 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 I'll wear it. I've got a chunky knit on. What, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? What, what, why, do we have, why do we have different clothes on? The temperature dropped a little bit, yeah. and I thought, let me just nip off and get a jumper. Also, there was a fire alarm in the building. Yes, there was, wasn't there, Ethan? Um, and oh, we yes, had there to was, yes. stop recording for a couple of days as a result, because our time slot got sort of dwindled to nothing. Big fire alarm. Big fire alarm. No fire. During those couple of days, I have had a really big night out, which I'll tell you all about on next week's podcast yeah so there's a tease a very deal. interesting time warp going on here but all you oh need to God, know is like the rest of the pod was recorded in one chunk and this bit is being recorded separately we yes. didn't want to leave you with no joe versus joe oh that always means great banter Oof. <laughs> christ alive you are <laughs> running on very little at the minute great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when the petrol light comes on? That was 20 miles ago for Joe. What it? You I are am. on fumes. The engine is misfiring, my man. I, uh, I hope we're going downhill in this bit. Oh, Joe versus Joe as well. This is going to be me losing a vital point You've to you in the race. You've had one of the biggest nights out of your life, haven't you? We just hit it hard uh, on Saturday. Ethan, and uh, Sunday. And Sunday. Just had a big night, so I'm, I feel like I'm going to lose a point over to you, which is unfortunate here, but I've got every sort of will in me to fight back and go for it. Yeah, you're a sort of coiled spring, aren't you? You're, you're a, a tiger in a corner here. Yes. A, a corner of your own making. So you, we might see the best out of you, but Ethan James. And the worst. Could you bring us uh, Joe versus Joe? Boom, 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 boom. Hello, everyone. Ooh, don't I look rather different to usual? Um, you look, you're, probably, you're probably wearing the exact same thing, aren't you? Um, I don't know, actually. It's a good question. I was more referring to my camera setup, but nonetheless, we'll look past that and we'll move on. Uh, Chris has been in touch. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, and Chris has sent me um, some questions. The problem with Chris, not the problem with Chris. Problem with well, Chris. it is a problem with Chris, isn't it? Because it's not a problem with anyone else. Hmm. Mm, well, yes, the problem with... Um, Chris. Chris's um, email of the questions on, he's put a lot of effort in here. He's decided to put it onto a PowerPoint slide, which is That's formatted terribly oh, okay. on iPhone, which makes the quiz almost unreadable. Can you show <laughs> the camera? Can you just show the camera a rough so example this, of the colours? This is... That is oh, that. Right, Chris, come on, mate. Chris. Know, thank you so much for doing this. But yeah. he's, he's part of the quiz to see if Ethan can read it, because if so, you've done really well. Yeah. To be honest, Chris... Ethan said before, I don't want to say this now, but Ethan no, said, no, no, no. I, no, Ethan said, F this, I can't even read it, I don't want to read it, I hate Chris. So you've backtracked a little bit, Ethan. On to the quiz. <laughs> um, the What's topic, this about? The topic that Chris has decided to um, rustle up and um, buy from the shop. Shocking bit oh, of we're shocking all, are you, are bit we all of What's going on? Yeah, you're meant to be the sober one here. He is, um, I've had... Uh, a pint every day this weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. Two, Fucking two hell. Days. One well, pint every day this weekend. At least five um, a day. Let's just say I know how to have 1.5 units a day. <laughs> Fucking hell. You're basically Jimmy, not Jimmy Savile. Nope. Who's the other one? Pete Doherty and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. On to the round of chocolate. Oh, well. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. But what? talk about starting on third base. What do you mean third base? As you don't use chocolate in third base. Also, <laughs> have you ever heard of a metaphor? Also, oh, God, we can all it. have chocolate. But you I don't like, review chocolate. No, and I might eat it more than you, but it doesn't mean I know everything about it. Okay. Do you think I do? 
I don't think you know everything about it, but you know I know nothing about it. Why do you know you know nothing about I don't chocolate? Like it. Big statement from you, that. Right, come on, Ethan. Okay, on to the chocolate we go. Let's dive right in there. Into the chocolate. Oh, it's as I try and read question one that Chris has sent me. practiced over the weekend. It's currently 2-1 to me, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe yeah. Joe, isn't it? Always good to lay the foundations. <laughs> question one. Which chocolate bar has featured the tagline full of Eastern promise? Ooh, I don't know. Full of Eastern promise. That Five feel, seconds. I'll be honest, that feels antiquated at best and racially insensitive at worst. Um, full of Eastern promise. That must be a clue. Eastern? You got two seconds and then I'm, I'm going to sound the alarm. Like... Alarm, alarm. Alarm, alarm. Right, you have to give me your answer. What have you put? I'm going to go Turkish Delight, but... Yeah, it's I've a called, yeah, it's a Turkish Delight. What have you put? Turkish Rose, I've put. Well, so, what's that then? That's the, the brand, isn't it? I don't know. What is it? He said doing? Turkish Rose. Mm, and right. I said Turkish Delight. Well, that, it, it is Turkish Delight. And I don't really know what Turkish Rose is. That's the brand. Let's have a look at this. Didn't you bring that in once? All right, well, I'm willing well, to no, give no, no, you Well, no, 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 no. If you Google Turkish Rose, there is no mention of Turkish Delight whatsoever. You can you can check that for yourself, Ethan. You don't he's get a point for go, that. No, he's just going general Turkish Delight. Well, Turkish Rose isn't a type of Turkish Delight. Yes, it is. Turkish Rose chocolate, I'm going to put. Yeah. The topic is chocolate. Just thank you. Right, one, one. Turkish Rose is not a type of chocolate. It is uh, in no, Turkey. It's not. It is in Turkey. You cannot give him the answer for this. There is no, it is in in, there is no internet-based evidence that Turkish Rose is anything to do with Turkish delight. Who, who occupies the slogan, True, Is it just the general Turkish delight? Yeah, it's general Turkish delight. But, but you know what? It doesn't matter whether it's general Turkish delight or not because Turkish Rose isn't a type of Turkish delight. Yeah, but what I'm saying is your answer is wrong as well because it's not just all Turkish delight in general. Well, the answer. What's the answer written down? Um, the answer written down as I battle through Chris's notes is Turkish delight. Okay, so Just they Turkish they are delight. so they are the exact words that I said, and you didn't say those words and said right, something. Ethan, I think it'd be mean if you don't give me that. How could he possibly get a point? Because you know what I mean. He just he just went. Oh right, generic. so you're allowed to say words that aren't the actual answer, but because you it's might like know what he means milk if he chocolate. got it right. It's like going milk chocolate. No, it's not because yes, Turkish is. rose isn't a type of anything. No, you, you've you just went made milk something chocolate. up. All right, listen. He wants to cheat to win. Awful. What what? Ethan, what's going through your head at the minute about the, the well, words Turkish Rose? What I'm thinking is, is the Turkish Rose like the flavour of the Turkish like that's inside the chocolate, those chocolate bars that you get? It's that's rose flavoured jelly, but, ah. that's, but that doesn't matter. That's not the name of anything. All right, okay. Is I, it? I, 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 under, I, I understand what you're saying. The answer is Turkish Delight. Drew did not say Turkish Delight, therefore it's 1-0 to Awful. Drew Smith. Dead upsetting. No. What's number two? You just wish you'd said Turkish Delight. That's the short and tall Turkish bit. Rose. What's that? It's the same thing. It's not, it's not it a thing. It is. <laughs> well, we can VAR it in the comments if people uh, go against it and we can look at the results. But for now, the on-field decision is no goal. It's okay. Question two on chocolate. Which famous mountain is the logo of the Tobal Rhone? Tobal Road. Oh, God. you got five seconds. Five seconds. It's a good one. Don't know is the answer. No, is I it, don't is know. It, is it the name of a specific peak or is it the name of the Alarm, range? alarm. That was the alarm there, Drew. Did you hear that? Yeah. Well, that means... Is it, it, is it a mountain or is it a, 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 a range? The bloody mountains? question. Sorry, I got a bit angry there. I didn't mean to. It's all right, Ivo. The, the question simply says mountain. Okay. And it's a famous mountain. And now I need your answer. I okay. need you to stop wasting time, please. All I've got is Everest. Possible. It's a mountain. I've got Mont Blanc. The answer... Is the Matterhorn? Oh, Matterhorn! Isn't that in America? Oh, oh I couldn't Matterhorn. possibly say. Oh, these answers are wild. This is good though. This I thought good. it was one in Switzerland. Yeah, I did as well. Maybe Matterhorn is in Switzerland. Also, did you think Everest is in Switzerland? It starts in Switzerland, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it makes its way from Switzerland. Mount Everest is massive. 
Google is not everywhere. It's Switzerland. And it makes its way from Switzerland to Nepal, does it? That Yeah, but it's big, though. It's the biggest mountain in the world. It's not 4,000 miles wide. How do you know? 4,000 miles wide? Yeah. How big is ne- Everest? Google that. It's, no, it's 18,018 metres tall. I, I, I believe them. It's definitely not in Switzerland, Drew. I'm not Googling that if you're asking me to Google that. <laughs> Start um, in Switzerland. Love that. <laughs> question three on chocolate. Um... The question... Oh, guys, this is a tough one. Which chocolate bar was first manufactured in 1932 in Slough, England? 29,029 feet, not sure. What? Chocolate bar in Slough, England in what year? Sorry. The year, Drew, was 1932. Oh, it's an oldie, isn't it, It's an oldie, but is it... Five seconds. But is it a goodie? He's going to say milk chocolate and you're going to give it to him. What is the name of the chocolate bar? Well, I'm not telling you that, true. No, is that the question? <sighs> yes. Yes. Okay. Alarm, alarm. Alarm, alarm. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. right. Well, we're going to go into the answers now. So, Drew Smith, I want you to reveal first. I've gone with dairy milk. I've also gone Slough, give it away a little bit, with Birmingham, the dairy milk, Cadbury's. Oh. No, that can't be right, because Slough's near Reading. Oh, is it? Which I didn't I didn't know Cabbage was a Birmingham thing. Oh, God, I've not given it So we're probably both wrong. The answer... Oh, God, what a fucking day I'm having. ...was Mars Bar. It's always going to be Cabbage, Dairy Milk or Mars Bar, wasn't it? It's, it's, I didn't realise Cabbage was a Birmingham thing. I hope that's not a fucking question. What city... Uh, ...was John Cadbury from? Right. Slow. Back to me. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Back to you... <laughs> Over to you in the studio. Work to me. Um, question four on chocolate. We're getting now the near and the nitty and gritty. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. This is impossible to read. <laughs> How many segments are there in a Terry's chocolate orange? Oh, my God. That's mental. Is this nearest answer? Um, no. Yeah, oh yes, right. where he, what he says is plus or minus two either way. Oh great. Okay. Right, I've got an answer. Uh, you have to write down first so you can't just say like one over or one over. Okay, order. write it down. What you got? I've got... I'm tucked between two, I'm going to go with that. I've gone 20. I've gone 24. Well... For this question four, and I've just realised that Chris hasn't done a bloody question five, so I'll think of something. <laughs> um, no, because if Joe wins this, he wins. So. What, what, what was the answer? Did you say Drew Smith? 24 and 20. I said 20. You said 20, Drew Smith. All right, well, you'll be delighted to hear that one of you has got a bang on the money. <gasps> is it an extra point as well? Because if it is, then Joe Smith extra wins. Point. No, he said bonus point for bang on. No, he didn't. I, I don't think I ever said that. Oh, Are you, you really have. I've heard there's someone to do a bonus point if you get it bang on. You've really struggled this weekend, Just you? write down. What a big Saturday. Write down you that. Are. Write down that. And all I can say is thank God Chris didn't do any more questions because Joe Smith takes it with 20. Ten. Is it 20 exactly? Yes. Come on! <sighs> Got it. 20 absolute segments. That's there. my favourite of the chocolates as well. Awful. 2 0 across the four questions. Do you don't want to do like a fifth one in the top of your head now, Ethan? That's worth three points. All right, let me have a little. No, not all right. Go on, go on. No, you might as well. That's not you happening. Might as well. What do you mean, you might as well? I'm the one that had to sit in a McDonald's for 24 hours. I wasn't thinking I might as well just risk it all for no reason at that point, was I? Right. Well, you I've won. It's a shame, isn't it? And if any further questions aren't counted as the actual quiz, Ethan, they're a that's bonus. a shame, isn't it? I'll ask him, um, what is the most. A current chocolate bar that I get in my Tesco Express meal deal. What a bizarre Great question. Size. What is the most occurring chocolate bar? Crunchy. Or the mode, you could say, Drew. You the can see the bar. mode. Well, I can currently see two Reese's peanut butter cups on the desk. Ah, interesting fact. I've never ever ate Reese's cups. I've just found it in the bag. No, I haven't said that's, that's my minus answer. one. I've just said I can currently see that, but if you'd let me finish the sentence, but they aren't a chocolate bar, so it can't be them. Minus two. Why is that minus two? Answering back. Um, I'm going to go with a Kinder Bueno. Oh, what about you, Drew? I said crunchy. I regret that. Oh, I do like a crunchy. 
but I'm afraid it was a Dairy Milk Marvelous Creations. Oh, oh. Me, you're three years old. Nah, the good they are. The good they are. So I win Joe versus Joe. Well done. Well hey. done, Joe. You always write uh, questions on the life and times of me or something like Come on. Buffalo sauce. Um, please do so I can get some points back. Where was Buffalo sauce created? Oh, near Switzerland. Correct. So yeah. Everest. 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 Yeah, exactly. uh, right, have we got time for a little uh, uh, agony bants? Agony bants. Agony bants. Agony. Agony bants. Do do. Uh, give this guy a name, please, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, um, after the talking about a Terry's chocolate orange, I'm going to call him Orange. Mick. Oh, hey, he's done <laughs> that a little. Was, that was very good. Ethan, Ethan is a master of the old switcheroo. This is from Mr. Orange. Ooh, Agent Orange, if you will. Can we say that? Dear Joe's and Ethan, yeah. I'm noticing a severe lack of pita breads in my local Morrison's, That's Aldi, amazing. Sainsbury's, Waitrose, Lidl's, Tesco's, and Morrison's. I love the humble pita bread, but I sadly think the demand is lowering. Right, right I need to just, right. Read me the list of supermarkets again. Morrison's, Aldi, Sainsbury's, Waitrose, Lidl, Tesco, Morrison's. Oh, okay, so Tesco as well. Because I thought I could see the way this email was going. Well, and I thought we were going to see, interesting enough, Tesco have plenty in because every pitter helps. I thought oh, there was going to be no. some sort of no, pun no, no, on no. that. Orange Sorry, there's a lack of pitter bread. I've not clever. bought pitter bread, so I wouldn't know about this. The demand is lowering. Do I? Wait, the demand is lowering or the availability is lowering? Well, I think the demand, uh, well, Orange, Orange <laughs> thinks the demand is <laughs> I don't understand this. Joe, Joe, I've never seen you like this. And just read what Orange says, please. Orange says that he has a very, um, well, a craving for pita breads now. And he's wondering how does he get his supermarkets to restock the humble pita? Does he, A, go around all of the supermarkets in his local area, start buying all the available pizza breads, making the bosses at the supermarkets think that there is a demand back and therefore the pizza breads are returned to our shelves or does he be just find a new type of bread to like? Orange. Thank you, Orange. Um, I haven't noticed a diminishing of pizza. You don't buy them? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, uh, uh, so you're part of the very problem. Co- very combative. You're part of the problem. I am more likely to buy you sort of, do you know, in the past, when you go to a supermarket, yeah. the only naan you would get would be your Sharwoods. It looks like a sort of oversized Jack and the Beanstalk giant's ear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That style pita bread. It's thick. It's doughy. It's nothing like the one you would get at an Indian restaurant. No, no, no. Whereas now... You've got to throw water on it, haven't you? You've got to throw water on it. Like, you know, ba- like it's bathe ba- it. ba- Baptise the bloody thing before you pop it in the oven for why, don't you? Whereas now, I feel as though what was once the sort of the... Um, the domain of the of the world foods aisle or the the asian owned supermarket you will now find a more high class more traditional better instant pitter option across the spectrum not but pitter sorry non option non non option non option do you know the one where it's bigger it's crustier yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. more it flavor more it costs a little bit more but it's it's so much better than the old fashioned one yeah i think that pitter might need Ah. an upgrade i think we may be looking at a a world where the, uh, uh, there is there is a, a, a readiness for a new pitter so a better you, more traditional pitter who do you text about that i don't know because pitters haven't changed since i was a kid in the supermarket no that, the pitters have always stayed the same they're exactly the same a little they're, bit dead as they're well they're basically they? a sort of white an envelope with flour on it yeah and always so hot if you toast it uh, have you ever oh. touched anything hotter it's fucking mental oh. You, you 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 die. Do you know why? I think it's because the surface is so smooth that it's almost like when you grab a bit of toast, there's so many like pockets of air for the yeah. heat to escape through. Pitta locks, it's like picking up clay almost, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's like picking up glass. It locks itself in. They are the hottest thing on the supermarket. Other than, have you ever had a, a, a Pop-Tart? No. You've, have oh, you ever had a Pop-Tart? God. Have you ever bitten well, into one of those straight out of, the, uh, out of the thing? Well, you see, Drew, um, when I went to America, I got the Pop-Tart and in a full box and I never knew you had to toast them. After oh. I ate them all. That's pathetic, isn't it? Wow. The other hottest thing... Have you a crumpet not toasted? No. That's like, is that like Ethan eating a Pop-Tart? I think it might be. Awful business, that. That's really awful. Just crumbly in a oh, big mess. Awful, awful, but awful. But not even melting, just laying on top like a big, yeah, thick like bit a of cheese. Um, the other hottest thing in the supermarket, so it's Pitta, Pop Pop-Tart, you, because you're always in there. The hot counter. The hot counter. But other than that, 
the Chicago Town mini personal pie. You pull one of those things out the oven, oh, the God. center of it, it goes be so it goes like solid and then you heat it and then it's liquid and then you heat it and then it's gas. And then you heat gas and it becomes plasma and it essentially just glows and sort of interacts with time itself. That is the state that that sauce is inside wow. the, the, uh, the, the Chicago Town mini personal pie. They are unbelievably hot. They're on another realm. They are, yeah, they are, they're, they are. they're so hot, you, you would think you'd have to find them in space. You know the sorts of temperatures you only talk about near the death of a dying sun? Yeah. That's how hot they are. But in terms of real foods, maybe Pitta is too hot. Do you think that's playing a role? Do you think that's why the Pitta boys are suffering? Or, like, does Orange say, does he go round now and try and create demand by buying all the Pittas on the shelves? Therefore, the bosses start, start thinking, hmm, the Pitta boys are bad. Have you know, but are Pitta's, are Pitta's sales low? Yeah, cool. And that's why they're today. not stocking any. Or is the reason there are no Pittas on the shelves because sales are so high hmm. They can't already keep up with demand. No, because I look at the bagel boys and I think, fucking hell, that, that's a lot going to waste there. And also, here's the other thing. There is no sesame seed pitta. There is no cinnamon oh. raisin pitta. It's brown or white. Yeah. The, the they need, we need more variety. When you think of the, the bagel, sesame seed, regular, onion, uh, oh, cinnamon raisin, as we mentioned there. before. Onion kicking about. An you onion. know, an onion bagel with cream cheese on it. Change your life, mate. When you think of even the other sort of, uh, you know, sort of traditional sort of non-English breads. You think of the naan bread, you're getting garlic, regular, coriander, yeah, peshwari. Yeah, yeah. Like there are so many options. Whereas pitta, white, brown. We need to reinvent it. the pitta. Let's reinvent the pitta on the Sloppy Joe's How podcast. How do we do it? Maybe a sun-dried tomato feathered oh, throughout. <laughs> maybe. maybe we could do that, something like Even that. Even what do you think? Oh. An olive pitta, hello! Oh, a patty pitta. What? What, a patty pitta? Pitta with pate pre-smeared within it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a, good. That sounds absolutely vile. Great, <laughs> so, but we can try it. I'm a little it. Let's go. Yeah. What do you think, Ethan? Oh, what? Is the pitta being left behind by the variety of other breads? Oh, well, I th once had a vegan stage of my life, but it was for part-time. It was for a few times a week. And I so started... So you weren't vegan then? There was just a few meals where you didn't eat meat? No, no, no. I was part-time vegan to try and convert myself to a full-time one but then I became very skinny and not very well. But then you said well. a few times a week. Oh yes. So how often a week? Oh like uh, three times a week I'd be vegan. When you say three times a week, three days or three meals? Three days? Was it? Yeah but you only has one meal a day. Yeah so basically, three meals, he so three eat. meals a week he would just accidentally not have meat in it and then he's saying there was a spell where he's a vegan. So I'd have these pitta breads <laughs> with um, Vegan chicken in there with hot sauce and salad. And every time I ate that pita bread, not only would it burn my tongue, it would blow up me severely. But I didn't stop me because I had no idea what else to make that didn't have meat. So I had it many times and got quite ill over the, uh, over the weeks. Over the days, <laughs> over the meals <laughs> where I had it. Yeah. Um, so so We're just, just, the pitch just if we week. could if we could before we, we we go to the nine out of ten club if you could come up with a coherent point as to what the fuck that has to do with anything oh yeah so you had a pitter and it made you a bit bloated how does this fix orange's problem oh that's that's a good question <laughs> connecting it back to the original point is always tricky isn't it i say right we give people some homework we're gonna reinvent the pitter yeah Sloppy Joe's podcast yeah. at gmail.com. Uh, and I've not realised this. I'm really glad Orange messaged in because I hadn't realised how lagging behind all the breads it the is. Boys Even are. focaccias you can get two or three types. Oh, Ciabattas yeah. you can get two or three different types. Oh, yeah. Let alone your naans, your, your sort of your sliced, you know, traditional <laughs> Hovis, Warburton's, all them lot. There's multiple brands that alone multiple many. types. There's only two types of pitta, white and brown. Let's that is not good pitta. enough. Sloppy Joe's podcast at gmail.com. But I'm hungry, so let's do 9 out of 10 club. In our other clothes. <laughs> right, should we get to the 9 out of 10 These club? are going to be cold, these. It's okay, 9 out of 10 It's club. Burger Wars. It's Chicken Burger Wars. It is the spicy Chicken Burger War. Yeah. We're only going to do five of these, although we could do so many. Yeah, so we're limiting it to five of the most highly acclaimed, well-known, famous or infamous chicken burger restaurants in the Manchester area. Mm. So far, uh, we've already done two. This is going to be Shake Bees. We've done Shake Bees and fries. we've done Mr. Fries. I'm just getting the <clears> list up For those here. who don't know, essentially, Spicy Chicken Burger is now Manchester's signature dish. It is a chicken fillet, crisped up, Mouth fried, already. dipped in spicy sauce, yeah. a bit of American cheese, mayo and lettuce. Where do we find ourselves today, We Joe? find ourselves getting a message uh, yesterday 
from someone who says, listen up here, uh, cats and dogs. Ohio Fried Chicken Ooh. is a new player on the scene. They specialize in spicy chicken bug bugs and you should come and try them. Let's do a little zoom shot. Okay. Oh, mine doesn't look good at all. It doesn't look spicy. It doesn't look spicy. So here's the burger. No. This doesn't look good, does it? Ethan, come and get... Where's the sauce? There's, there seems to be... There's no... There's a tiny bit of lettuce, a tiny bit of sort of a, a, a reddish sauce. Um, so let's have a couple of bites. It's nice, it's fine. This is not in the same stratosphere as the other two, is it? No, awful. We've been let down here. Who's this? Hmm? Who's this? Someone texted me yesterday. Block them. It's the game blocked. Oh, what a bad way to finish up the pod. Um, Awful. Keep it simple. It's not spicy. Right, I think we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do three more. Okay. It's not. Sim it's not spicy. It's a basic standard chicken fillet on some basic standard bread. <coughs> not enough lettuce. Not enough crunch. Not enough flavour. That's a, a absolutely bog standard. Five out of ten burger. You've let yourself down there. Yeah. You've got yeah. the potential yeah. to do yeah. something yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And I've got to say, the picture for Ohio fried chicken looked brilliant. They look like they're going for a slightly more upmarket. Thing, yeah. But that is a absolutely bog It's not even dipped. Standard. It's not got American cheese. What's going on? Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 a five out of ten. It's just literally middle of the road bog standard burger. What's happened there? I don't know. Someone's fucked us down. over, Joe. I if we ordered the right thing. No, that was a spicy burger, wasn't it? I ordered it. I ordered them. It was a spicy burger. Joe McGraw, give me your review out of that. I'm going to give it a 5.0. Yeah, 5.0. It's not bad, is it? We'll have to do three more. I want to leave it on a high. I want okay. to do three on a high. Right, we've got Florida fried chicken just near the uh, the eye hospital. <laughs> Miami crispy. It's brilliant, that Florida. There's a side for sore eyes. Miami crispy. And the word on the street is Rocco's. Yep. Is the top three. Okay. Now, so they're the three we're going to end on. Yes, yes, yes. Ethan Ooh. James, rate that burger you just eaten. That was fucking shit. What a disgrace. <laughs> disgrace uh, to the Manchester Chase Spicy Chicken Burger See. It was just boring. The be the thing that was better, uh, the only good feature about this one compared to the one they had the other day is that it doesn't fall apart. Yeah. yeah but that, it's mm -hmm. still dry, it's boring, it's not juicy. Well, that's why it doesn't spice. fall apart. Exactly. And in, in the end, it's making me want to fall apart after. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Love, that, love, love that, love um, that. I'm going to give it a. <laughs> 3.3. Bye. 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 What do you think? Oh, uh, see you later.